approach your game for and not lose your intensity or become complacent? Well, anything can happen if you give a team confidence. And um, nothing's ever guaranteed in this league, so might as well leave it all out there on the floor. I'm thinking back in my mind, all we got to do is get one next floor. No. You know, I want to take it one game at a time and, like I said, just play your absolute hardest, exert all the effort you got. And, uh, we, should be, we should be good. Clay, how do you compare what it's like winning the championship on the road versus the final? Oh, man, I don't really like talking about winning championships right now because I haven't won anything. But based on my past experience, I don't have a preference. It just feels good to get the job done, to be honest, because it's so hard first place to win a championship, so you can't be picky. Whenever you win it, just be happy. Hey, when it comes to KD's performances, he's such a chill dude off the court, but how does he turn up those competitive dials to be pretty cold-blooded on a on a big stage? Oh, he's just not afraid of the moment. He never has been. Um, he'll take any shot, and uh, if he fails, it doesn't bother him too much because he knows how you know, good he is and how talented he is. That's why you succeed so much, and that's why you see him in big shots in the biggest stage of basketball. You guys know. Go ahead. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Well, because you guys know how good he is, but do you ever catch yourself marveling at some of his performances? Well, I think it's uh, the law of familiarity. You kind of take it for granted how good he is, and you get so used to seeing him do it on a nightly basis, you forget that, you know, scoring 43 points on 22 shots in the finals is so incredibly hard and has not been done very often. So um, we appreciate him so much, and uh, like I said, you know, it's just a familiar feeling, so you take it for granted sometimes. Do you feel like you guys are pushing back the limits on a three-pointer, you know, when the game is throwing up those 35 footers, and it's kind of, you know, seems like range is, you know, moving back? Yeah, I think it's just uh, an evolution of the game, really. Um, shooting's at a premium right now and I think it will be for the rest of you know, the history of basketball just because if you got shooters you can stretch the floor you can give yourself more space to operate and with our team you know we can start our offense from 35 feet out because we got a few guys who can pull up from that distance and uh, obviously helps have, helps have Steph and KD who can take and make any shot in the book but like I said just when you got guys like that can stretch the floor it just makes it so easy for everyone else to operate. Um, obviously, you guys won Game Three, which is the ultimate goal. Is there any feeling of a, uh, as a competitor, competitor, a need to bounce back after an ordinary game? Like, yeah, you absolutely. Uh, you know, individually, it's, it is a team sport. And it feels amazing to win. You know, win and lose the team, but you always think in the back of your mind, oh, if I do this better individually, you know, by this much, you know, yeah. stop it from doing this. So. Me and Steph, obviously, are thinking that over these next couple of days we want to have a better performance from us. We think if we do that, Would you just tell me. Uh, you know, stress in the last minute and having Katie's rows bail us out. Maybe we can, you know, go into, go into a fourth corner with a, you know, just eight, ten, twelve point lead and, and execute from there. Class uh, basketball, some nights aren't your nights, and you just got to move forward and bounce back for the next chance. Quite how much it right off the top, but, uh, but how does last year's experience in Game Four where where Cleveland gave you yeah. everything they had to help you approach this year's Game Four in the same situation? Uh, it's such a familiar feeling. Feeling. Uh, you, you feel good about yourself. It's natural to feel great about yourself right now. It's natural to be on high because you know we're one we're 40 minutes away from the championship. But um, that's the feeling. One of the feelings you have to fight. You got to fight complacency. You gotta fight the feeling like you already won this thing, but it's far from over. This is not a team that will roll over and just give you the game. You saw it last year, you saw it in 2016. So we gotta go out there and put them away. It's not up to you know us to let the cat beat themselves. We gotta go out there and beat them. They're not a team that really beats themselves. They're too competitive and too talented. But how do you kind of compare and contrast when Kevin and gets it going, or Steph gets it going, like just what their mentality is like, what it's like kind of witness that as well? It's very similar, to be honest. They just want the ball, and they want to uh, make the right play. It doesn't mean make, taking and making crazy shots. It can mean just coming off the pick and hitting the open guy. And uh, when they're flowing like that, that's when we're at our best.
Steve Hurst said this is the, the time in basketball of this era that might have the most talented collection of players on the court. What are you thinking about the guys you're, you're matching up against and, and the product right now for the NBA? Wow, that's going to mean a lot coming from Steve. Uh, the amount of basketball he's seen in his career, so it's really cool and I'm happy to be a part of it. Um, still, we're never satisfied, especially with his team. I know guys around the league aren't satisfied. Everyone works at it. It's our craft and we take great passion in you know, delivering a great product because we work so hard at what we love. How has your approach to facing a player that has one of the highest basketball IQs in history evolved this, during these four years in the finals? Do you feel more confident? I do feel more confident just because there's a familiar sense of being uh, the nerves aren't as, aren't as great as it was the first time around and going against a guy like LeBron James. I mean, he's a historic player. He might not, a player might like him might not not ever come around again. So you gotta embrace it, and you gotta do it collectively. You know, and no one's gonna just go out there and say, "I'm gonna stop LeBron tonight." You know, you gotta do this team, and uh, yeah, you gotta have fun while doing it. Believe it or not, because uh, it's rare you ever get to play against this much talent. What do you need to do to stay in the zone, lock in, and think about winning this game and not the whole series? That's the beauty of it. If we lock in and win this game, we win the whole series. So, uh, you know, we know what's at stake and we don't want to leave it up to chance. It has to go back to open. Um, we have a golden opportunity here to get a 4 0 sweep, which has not been done. We have never done it in the finals, and it would be a nice cap to a very, you know, up and down year we had. It would be an amazing feeling. Yeah, Clay, what, what would a sweep mean to you? Uh, it would just be the great, uh, great punctuation on what has been an up and down year. Uh, a lot of ups, plenty of downs though with injuries and you know, fatigue and uh, I mean it might be 3-0 but you know this team has had a chance to beat us. We played two days in both games so we can't feel too great about ourselves right now. We still have a lot of work to do. But like I said it just mean so much to be able to get this. We haven't done it in the finals before and be awesome to make history. Speaking of up and down here, as uh, talking to Dream, you were saying each trip, the journey is different this year. What have you learned about your team this season and what you guys have come through getting all the way here? I just never count, count us out. Um, and, uh, what I've learned is that you've got to ha have your eyes on the prize, you know, you've got to, it's a marathon, not a sprint. You know, it's 82 game season and, you know, four rounds of playoffs on top of that. So it's a lot of basketball more mentally grinding, I think, than anything. Uh, just the energy output you have to, you know, bring every night. It takes a lot out of you. So that's why, you know, you see us pour champagne on each other uh, when you get that goal because it's so hard to achieve. And we know how much work it takes. It doesn't matter if we have a chance to do it in three out of four years. It's Each year is so hard and unique in itself. Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant is almost Kevin Durant is almost unguardable. Can you talk about how made this team different from two years ago? Uh, well, now we got a guy. We've had guys in the past, but not as efficiently as KD does it. We can just throw to when our offense is kind of stalling out. We're not getting much movement. We're not getting much flow. We just throw it to KD. He can get you a good shot every time because he's so long. He's so talented with the ball in his hands. So that's all. Like Coach Kerr says, ultimate luxury to have.